Hello, I'm Charlton Heston. I'm glad to be able to introduce you to another in our series of programs about the great heroes of the Bible. The Old Testament is filled with stories of heroes, men and women who rose up in times of crisis to protect God's chosen people. But with the possible exception of Moses, none was as great as David, the humble shepherd who eventually became king of Israel. When David was just a boy, Israel had another king, a man named Saul. And for a time, it appeared that Saul would be the one to lead the ancient Israelites to victory over their deadliest enemy, the Philistines. Now, Saul was indeed a great warrior, but he made a fatal mistake. He turned his back on God, and so the Lord chose David to replace him. It seemed like an odd choice at the time. David was, after all, just a boy. But as the Bible says, the Lord does not see as men see. They look on the outward appearance. The Lord looks on the heart. When God looked into David's heart, he saw that this young man had faith and strength of character. And these, of course, are the qualities that all heroes must have, even before they learn to fight. David's inner strength enabled him to endure his first test on the battlefield, a confrontation with a terrible giant named Goliath. Everyone else in King Saul's army had been afraid to fight Goliath, but not David. When the time came, he calmly faced his opponent and said, I come to thee in the name of the Lord. Well, needless to say, Goliath didn't take David's words very seriously. David was feared by all his enemies and loved by the people of Israel. Now, I'd like you to get ready for a journey back to ancient I've asked my friend Simon to be your guide in this adventure. I hope you enjoy the experience, and I look forward to being with you again soon. was young and full of miracle and wonder, God chose a great man named Saul to be the first king of Israel. God's will be done. Saul and his army protected Israel from many enemies. Then God commanded King Saul to slay Israel's enemy, the Amalekites. Attack! Once again, King Saul led the Israelites to victory. He spared the life of the Amalekite king and brought the spoils of war home to the Israelites. King Saul, and King Saul loved his people. But that night, God spoke to King Saul's advisor, the prophet Samuel. Samuel, King Saul has turned away from me. Since he rejects my commandments, I reject him as king of Israel. Yes, I understand.
With a heavy heart, Samuel went to Saul's palace to deliver God's word. Do you hear it, Samuel? The people still cheer. Who in Israel is more popular than I, Samuel? No one. What troubles you? God spoke to me. Tell me what God said. Samuel, this is a day to celebrate our victory against the Amalekites. God is displeased. You broke his commandment. But you said God wanted the Amalekites slain. Slay them I did. But when the people wished the life of the Amalekite king spared, you listened. When the people wanted you to bring home the spoils of war, you listened then, too. But Samuel, I'm king. I serve the people. I must listen to them. God is king of all. Yes, you're right. I made a foolish mistake. Help me atone. No, Saul. It's too late. You chose the word of the people over the word of God. But if I, if I pray... Because you turned your back on God, God now turns his back on you. No. He no longer wishes you to rule over Israel. No. No, Samuel. I beg you. Forgive me, O Lord in heaven. Samuel, help me! Just as you've torn my robe, so shall God tear away your kingdom and give it to another. Samuel! Samuel! It was the last time King Saul would ever see the prophet Samuel alive. Samuel wondered who God wanted to rule over Israel in Saul's place. And then God spoke to him again. Samuel, do not mourn for Saul. I have chosen a new king among the sons of Jesse in Bethlehem. Go to Bethlehem, Samuel, and bring a horn of oil to anoint the new king. But Lord, if Saul finds out, he'll punish me. Go to Bethlehem and call Jesse and his sons. Tell them you have come to make a sacrifice to me. We're in Bethlehem now. That's David, the shepherd boy, Jesse's youngest son. Okay, Curly, time for a little target practice. Let's see. Ten points if I knock the fig off that branch. Think I can make it? <laughs> Bet I can. going on just just playing father don't you have work to do yes father come on curly David that lamb can walk fine on his own but father he's the smallest if I don't look out for him he'll never learn to take care of himself if you keep babying him Yes, Father. <laughs> Come on, Curly. You're tougher than you look. Samuel was anxious to meet the man God had chosen as the new king of Israel. I come to make a sacrifice to the Lord. And so, Jesse introduced his sons to Samuel, one by one. This is my eldest son, Eliab. Surely this one has kingly features. Samuel, 
You must look beyond a man's physical appearance and into his heart as I do. Which one, Lord? Not all of Jesse's sons are here, Samuel. There is another. Are these all your sons, Jesse? There's David, my youngest. He tends the sheep. I'm the prophet Samuel. I'm David, son of Jesse. Surely this is not the one. He's just a boy. Look not upon his size, but into his heart. Arise, Samuel, and anoint the next king of Israel. When the spirit of the Lord left King Saul, his heart was seized by fear and darkness. King Saul's children, Jonathan and Michal, came to see their father. Father, your spirits grow lower every day. Is there nothing we can do to cheer you? There's nothing anyone can do. God has left me. How can I defend the kingdom against the Philistines when God has lost his faith in me? But the people still love you, Father. My lord. What say you, advisor? Music has soothed you in the past. Perhaps we could send for someone skilled on the harp to play for you. I know a farmer in Bethlehem named Jesse. When his youngest son, the shepherd boy, plucks his harp, the sheep dance. Bring him to me at once. God be with you, my sons. W where are you going? To fight the Philistines. Can I come too? You? David? King Saul needs men in his army. Strong men, like us. You're just a boy, small and weak. Yeah, you're just a runt. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a chance, I know I can help. I'm tougher than I look. Hey, I know. We could make David our secret weapon. He'll march 10 paces in front of us, and when the Philistines see him, they'll die laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Better yet, little David could put the Philistines to sleep with his harp. <laughs> <laughs> God be with you. Look after father, little one. Stay out of trouble. Happy hurting, runt. They never let me do anything with them. Oh, don't let your brothers upset you, David. Your time will come. For now, you've got plenty of work to do here. I know. Time to take the sheep out. God be with you, David. God be with you too, Father. Come on, Curly. <laughs>
David's brothers left the farm to fight under King Saul. When David asked, can I come too, they said, you're way too small. And as he fetched his shepherd's staff, they raised their mighty swords and laughed. David is too little, David is too small. But in his heart he knows he's brave, one day he'll show them all. One day he will show. Samuel said, one day this boy will grow up to be king. But how can a mere shepherd boy rule over anything? Blind to the fire in his eyes, his brothers mocked his boyish size. David is too little, David is too small. But in his heart he knows he's brave, one day he'll show them all. One day he will show. <laughs> or now he plucks his harps and sings trying to amuse his lambs and rams and woolly sheep and curly coated ewes one day he'll leave his peaceful herds and make his brothers eat their words david is too little david is too small but in his heart one day he'll show them all One day he will show them all But if you look much deeper Than David's outer skin Then you'll see the brave soul That shines from within Here, Curly, I made this just for you.
the lion with my sling and staff. I was scared, but I knew God would protect me. That's quite a tale, David. But, Father, it's not a tale. It really happened. You needn't invent stories to impress me, David. I know you're brave. But... I bring a message from the king. Hmm? <coughs> the king wishes to hear your youngest son play on his harp. Me? My music isn't fit for the king. Oh, this is a great honor, David. But I only play for the sheep, Father. Go to Geber and play for the king, David. Yes, Father. The shepherd boy is here to play for you, my lord. Send him in. What's your name, shepherd boy? Uh, they, uh, they... I'm David. Well, harp player, play. If it pleases you, my lord. We'll see about that. some joy to me, boy. I thank you. If it pleases the king, it pleases me. My lord, the Philistines are marching on us. Uh, assemble the men at once. Yes, my lord. Let me fight with you, my lord. What, you? You're just a boy. I wish to serve you. Next time I need a harp player, I'll be in touch. But... Go back to your sheep, boy. Come, Jonathan. Yes, father. But... But my king, I want to kill the lion with my shepherd's staff! You killed a lion with just a staff? Yes, princess. The lion tried to take my favorite lamb. I had to kill him. You are quite brave. Thank you, princess. I must go now. God be with you, David. God be with you. Whoa! Perhaps we'll meet again. And so David returned to Bethlehem. Good thing you're back, David. I need you to bring this food to your brothers. Yes, Father. <coughs> hey, Curly! Did you miss me? No dawdling, David! Father? Aren't you even going to ask me how it went with the king? Will you stop thinking about yourself for a change and start worrying about your brothers? They're at war! Sorry, Father. Ah, oh, my feet are killing me. She'll waste some time. <laughs> if David were here, he wouldn't be complaining. David, David, David. He wouldn't last five minutes, and you know it. Halt! 
My lord, look! King Saul's men would volunteer. Eliab, a boy is here to see you. David? What's he doing here? He brings food from your father. Oh, I'm starving. Hello, brothers. Where's the food? Why are you here, David? You should be tending the sheep. Oh, father sent me to deliver the food. And you were only too eager to come, hoping we'd let you join in the fight. Please, Eliab. Go home now, David. This isn't a game. This is war. Israelites, we tire of your delays. Send your bravest to meet me in the Valley of Elah now, or throw down your spears and surrender. Great riches and my daughter's hand in marriage. Israelites, this is your last chance. Time is running out. Please, someone, anyone. Send me. Who said that? Here he comes. David, son of Jesse. The boy who plays the harp. Is this some kind of joke? If no one else is willing, I shall face the giant Goliath. Uh, pardon my little brother, my lord. He knows not what he says. Tell me, boy, have you any training in combat? No, my lord. But once, I slew a lion to protect my sheep. Surely a giant is no mightier than a hungry lion. Bravery alone is not enough. My king, the lord is with me. <sighs> the lord was with me once, too. You've wasted enough of the king's time, Runt. Go home and play with your little lamb. <laughs> <laughs> Why, you little... Advisor, what say you? The boy is quick on his feet. No one is more anxious to serve. Hmm. Yes. Suit him up. Look at him. He can barely lift the sword. This is a joke. And what will Father say when he learns we've let David march to his death? We'll be disowned. Perhaps you should fight in David's place. Me? Why not you? You're the oldest. 
Are you ready? This armor is weighing me down. <sighs> I'll be quicker on my feet without it. You can't fight without armor. I must fight Goliath of God my own way. David chose five smooth stones from a dry riverbed and went to meet Goliath of God. David, it's still not too late to change your mind. No one will think less of you. I know what I'm doing. He may be a runt, but he's a brave runt. He's a foolish runt. God be with you, boy. I will bring you the head of Goliath of God, my king. of Jesse. Do you think me a dog you can beat down with your little stick? You are great in size, and you have many weapons. But I have something even better. I face you in the name of God. I curse your dog. Then you will die by my hand. Ha ha! I shall tear you apart limb by limb and feed your wretched remains to the birds of the air and wild beasts. The birds and the beasts shall have a bigger feast of you. Die, Israelite! <laughs> <laughs> See, little David slew the giant. God truly is with that boy. If one small boy beat our mightiest warrior, what chance do we stand against their whole army? Slaves! No one slaves.
grew so jealous of David that he sent him away to fight in other wars, hoping David would be killed in battle and forgotten by the people. singing, Saul has killed his thousands, and David his ten thousands. <laughs> this made Saul's jealousy rage. King Saul feared that he'd lose his kingdom if he didn't get David out of the way. King Saul often asked David to play his soothing harp music for him. One day, as David played the harp, Saul fell into another jealous, hateful rage. David knew his life was in danger. Fearing that her father, King Saul, would try again to kill David, the Princess Michal helped David escape. Thank you, Michal. King Saul's son, Jonathan, met David at his hiding place. What have I done to make Saul hate me? Does he really want to kill me? I'll talk to him and find out. In the meantime, you have to hide. When I find out my father's true feelings, I'll send you a signal. More wine. What happened to David? Why isn't he here? I, uh, I think he went to spend time with his family in Bethlehem. He was feeling homesick. You don't really hate David, do you, Father? After all, he's done you no harm. How dare you take sides against me? Bring David to me now, or he must die.
The next morning, Jonathan went to the meadow where David was hiding to send the message. The arrow meant that David's life was still in danger. David had to stay hidden, or Saul and his men would find and kill him. After the prophet Samuel died, King Saul sought the services of a medium in Endor. I pray you to raise a spirit for me. Who shall I bring up unto thee? Bring me up the prophet Samuel. I summon thee, Samuel, who have left this fear. I summon thee. Who disturbs me? I, Samuel, Saul. What, what do you, you want, want of me? The Philistines wage war against Israel, and God has turned away from me. Please, I'm afraid. I pray, tell me what to do. Because you disobey the Lord, he is against you. Tomorrow, you and your sons shall be with me. Samuel's prophecy became true. Saul and his sons died in battle the next day. After King Saul died, David became king. He recaptured Jerusalem, which had been lost to the Jebusites, and rebuilt the cities that had been destroyed in war. King David ruled over Israel for 40 years. And from that day on, the holy city of Jerusalem would always be known as the City of David.